exciting stuff. <laughs> this would be Thursday, February 12th. We're going to get into Greek mythology. This is my advanced class. So we've covered our Honor Society applications and how entertaining they're going to be this year. Hoping we get some really good essays to offset choices. Uh, then next Friday, the book report comes due. We've missed that. All right. With the Greek mythology, things to cover with you as we get into it. Questions to answer is one, yes, Greek mythology. That's usually the first question that pops up. Are we really doing Greek mythology? The answer is yes. Yes, we are. And then kids will say, but isn't that social studies? Well, technically, if you do it in social studies, it's social studies. If you do it in English, it's English. The way it works is being in English, as long as I make you read something, it counts as English. So with Greek mythology, as long as you read something, it counts. So we're going to deal with it here. It does do a little cross-curricular because it will tap into a little social studies type knowledge. But for the most part, I find things that I find interesting that I am going to have to deal with for a while. And I find Greek mythology interesting. So this is what we'll be getting into. You'll see that the poster gnomes came last night. I sprinkled the desk with sugar, which seems to attract them. And then they went around and posted the posters all around the room. Um, the posters will stay up. I do not take them down. I do not cover them. I keep them up for all the quizzes, the tests, the assessments, all that. You will be able to look up there because as I talk about the stuff, I will be pointing to them. So my goal is that hopefully whenever you look up there, it will help jog those little bits of your memory. The handouts that are on your desk that you've already written your name on to make your life so much easier, you will get to use those on all of the quizzes and tests, and they will come in very handy. Greek mythology is full of really long, confusing names, and I absolutely understand that. So that's where the posters and the handouts and stuff like that will hopefully make your life a little bit easier. So you can look at that. Uh, the blue sheet are, uh, is notes that we're going to fill in as we go through and talk about Greek mythology, so hopefully that will make it easier on you. The white sheet, one side of it is a family tree, because as we get into Greek mythology, you're going to realize that apparently Greece is just south of Kentucky, uh, because there's lots of people who seem to be marrying brothers and sisters and children and parents and stuff like that, uh, which is very hillbilly-ish. Uh, and so you'll see that will hopefully help you figure out the different connections of people connected to other people and all the confusing bits that happens in there. So you can follow the lines. And on those lines, you'll also notice some like Zeus is connected to multiple people at once. We'll have to be creative when we talk about Greek mythology. Because Zeus was only married to, well, technically two people, but he killed the first one. Uh, he was, but he was connected to many different women because he had lots of friends. And so when we talk about Greek mythology, we're going to talk about people being friendly. And when you're friendly, children are born. And so you'll have to do some translating as we go through there. And as you look on your sheet, you'll see that Zeus was a very friendly person. Uh, and he had lots of friends, uh, and lots of different children with these friends, uh, and so we'll talk about that as we get into Greek mythology, so that's where the little handout will come in handy and help you follow his friendships. Friends. <laughs> uh, you will have questions as we get into Greek mythology, I don't doubt that whatsoever. The problem is, we're dealing with Greek mythology for like five, six weeks, we have other things come into it. I can't pack all that information into one day. It would make for a really long class period, and one of us would eventually pass out. So it's going to take us a couple weeks to get through it. So the questions you have, I will almost always respond with, we'll get to that. So when you every day like, Mr. Proviac, what about the story about... We'll get to that. Mr. Proviac, I saw this thing about... We'll get to that. So when you raise your hand and you ask me a question, expect me to probably say, we'll get to that. And which brings us to... When you raise your hand, I'm probably not going to call on you because I already know the answer. The answer is going to be, we'll get, get to that. that. See how it works? So I've learned my lesson over all the years. I think it's like, ah, 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 ah. they raise their hand, and they're just like, call on them, and then they ask that question, and I just go, we'll get to that. So when you raise your hand, just have patience. If it's a really good question, save it till the end, and I'll try to give us time at the end. But I'm trying to get through the different stories each day. So, Along with that, here comes the bad news. No, oh, bad news is the next one. All right, you have one more before we get to the bad news. Uh, mythology is connecting to religion. Uh, mythology, by definition, means religious stories. There's Christian mythology, Jewish mythology, Muslim mythology, Greek mythology. It means stories that connect to a religion. At one time, this was not just a religion. It was the only religion. 
it was the only thing you believed in. You believed in these gods or you were dead. Those were pretty much your two choices. People don't believe in Greek mythology today. There's no island somewhere where people are still praying to Zeus and Hera. Anyone that still believes in Greek mythology today is in a very padded white room wearing a really tight white jacket. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. What? So why... They're crazy. <laughs> and so why is it we study Greek mythology? Is because it shows, of all the things you're going to learn this year, this will be the most useful. When you go on to 8th grade, when you guys go on to high school, and even to college, the stuff you learn over these next couple weeks will be the stuff you carry with you the longest. Because Greek mythology shows up in almost every story, every movie, TV show, book that you have out there will connect to Greek mythology in one way or another. As we start going through this unit, you'll just start picking up one thing after another so we can connect to it. Which means that you're going to, for some of you, actually enjoy it. And you're going to have that moment during school when you're going to use the words school and English and enjoyment all in the same sentence. And so oftentimes we already have a handful of issues with the idea of the, the talking and the whole getting excited in the class thing. It happens even more frequently when we get to Greek mythology and the whole, my brain's enjoying itself and it's popping and neurons, blah, 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 and the words just start flying out. So people lose a lot of B points during this unit. So just trying to give you a heads up to when you feel the neurons start to pop in your head, to so do your best to try and keep control of it. If it helps, it, bring in tin foil, and you want to wrap the tin foil around your head and then pack it in really tight, and it keeps the neurons contained so they don't just unleash themselves. <laughs> it won't look funny whatsoever. You trust me. See, the talking has already begun. I see the happiness and excitement comes in. You get your own little tin foil helmet here. More power to you. Um, and a lot of what we'll be doing with this unit will be oral. Uh, Greek mythology is a lot like fables. It dealt with the idea of oral tradition. Do you remember what oral tradition is? Or stories that are passed down when through like just voice. Yeah, and there are the stories yeah. that get passed down. Fables and or in Greek mythology existed around the time time period with people who were illiterate. But something happens to our stories when you use oral tradition. What happens to them, Sammy? They change. Yeah, they change over time. If you know anything about Greek mythology and you've done any reading with it and you know stories about it, there's every chance the stories you know and the stories I tell are going to end up being different. It doesn't mean the stories you knew were wrong or the stories I'm doing are wrong. It just means there's different versions of the same story. Even for certain gods, there's more than one version of who their parents are, which is why over here I have this one crossed out. It's not crossed out because it's naughty, which for some reason is kids' first thought. It's crossed out because with Aphrodite, there's more than one version of who her parents are, depending on which story you go with. I only teach one of those two stories. I didn't want kids getting confused, so I crossed out the other one. And so the same thing will happen as we go through and deal with Greek mythology. If you know anything about it, your versions that you know might be different than my version, so don't let that freak you out too much. If you're absent for anything, you're going to have to watch YouTube, because a lot of times I don't always have a printed version of it. It's going to be just discussions and me telling stories in class and going over the blue sheets and the notes. And so if you don't go back and watch it, you will be completely lost. So make sure that you actually go back and watch class if you're absent. Because if you show up, pretty much the only thing I'm going to tell you from now until spring break is, did you watch class? And you'll go, what? And I'll go, good luck. So just give me the heads up now. Questions about any of that before we get into our first fun stories? Yeezys. With your bell work. We're going to go through and see where you put the different words into the different categories, and that's going to introduce our first couple of stories. If you have your word in the wrong spot, it's okay. We're going to have you fix it. You're going to fix it by just circling the word and then drawing an arrow to the category it goes in. If you really want to erase it and rewrite it, you can. I'm not going to make you do it because that seems like a lot of work. But some people want to do that because it makes it feel all nice and neat or whatever their issue might be. I'm fine with arrows. So we're going to have you vote for each one to see how accurate you are compared to everybody else. And we're going to start with chaos as our first one. So chaos, maybe raise your hand if you say chaos goes in gods, places, things, other stuff. Now you got lucky because chaos, you can't get wrong, goes in all four. Uh, I put it in gods and other stuff just because it's for room, but it can technically go in all four of those places. The reason it goes in all four of those places is goes back to how Greek mythology starts off. As I mentioned, Greek mythology deals with religion. 
Most religions have a creation story about how everything came to be. Chaos is Greek mythology's creation story. If you look at your little um, family tree, at the very top of your family tree, the very the, 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 the top of the tree, the bottom of the tree, is chaos. I have another version up here looking at that one. No, too. Chaos is that top one. Chaos was the first thing to exist in Greek mythology. We didn't have planets, we didn't have stars, we didn't have gods, we just had chaos. Chaos was a swirling ball of nothingness, just swirling around doing nothing. With Greek mythology, we're going to have moments where it doesn't make sense to you. That might be the first one, where you go, um, Mr. Broviak, how can it be swirling and nothing at the same time? If it's nothing, it can't be swirling. Um, the Greeks are just like, yeah, that's right. Like, but then they're like, yep, okay, and they move on. So it's, to help you out, we're going to imagine instead of it being a swirling ball of nothing, which is how they described it, we're going to imagine it's pudding, uh, because pudding is easier to imagine, and chocolate pudding, because chocolate pudding is delicious. So imagine <laughs> gigantic ball of swirling chocolate pudding, just pudding, 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 swirling, doing pudding stuff. And this goes on for, we don't know, time has not been invented yet. Uh, pudding's not wearing a watch. Uh, so eventually, <laughs> pudding, is, pudding eventually gets bored and splits like a giant amoeba with little nuclei and becomes the very first two beings. It goes, pudding, and forms the first two gods. Those first two gods it forms are Gia and Uranus, the same ones that are on your sheet. Mother Earth is Gia, and Mother Earth is the earth, and then Uranus is Father Sky, the blue stuff with the clouds and the little tweet tweets in it, the sky. And so it splits to form those as the very first two gods. Their names, Gia and Uranus, that's their pronunciation in Greek. I realize I teach seventh grade, so when you read those, you're going to translate that into giggle speak, and I'm okay with that, because you're not going to see Gia and Uranus. You're going to see Gaia and Uranus. I'm okay with that. I accept the fact that I teach seventh grade a long time ago. So even though I'm going to pronounce Ms. Gia and Uranus, when you go, Mr. Brogier, what about that Gia and Uranus? It's okay. Life goes on. So Gia and Uranus were the first two gods to be created. So because of that, chaos is technically gods because chaos formed the first gods. It's also other stuff because it was swirling pudding. And then it's places because chaos created the earth where we have places. And then I don't know, is it things? Because the things come from Earth, and the Earth came from chaos, so technically, isn't this, I don't know. So you can put it in all four, and probably be okay. Kronos! We'll go to that one next. Raise your hand. Kronos is God, place, thing, other stuff. And here's where those of you who have read your uh, Percy Jackson, you're like, oh, I know all about that. Kronos would be a god. Uh, and so Jackson is sitting in a good seat today because Kronos is the guy that's right up here who looks like he's well, wearing a mini skirt while trying to golf. They <laughs> <laughs> had great fashion sense back then. Uh, and so that was Kronos up there. You'll notice that his spelling there is different than the spelling there, which is different than the spelling there. There's multiple spellings of Kronos because of... Back oral oral tradition. Tradition. You guys are smart. Good job. Because of oral tradition. The spelling does not really count with Greek mythology. As long as you're close, then you're good to go. So all those different spellings of Kronos all count. Kronos, for those of you who know about Greek mythology, he was the guy that had the bad habit of eating babies, but who hasn't had that problem? Uh, <laughs> does get there before, so it's okay. And so that's where Kronos comes in. He was a guy. It's a girl. All like, oh my gosh. They're a little different than seventh grade, aren't they? Yeah. Baby what? Uh, while we're on Kronos and your introduction to Kronos through Percy Jackson, if you're familiar with Greek mythology through Percy Jackson series or through the, the Hercules cartoon with Disney, uh, a lot of what you know about Greek mythology is going to be wrong. Uh, and a lot of the stories we get into is going to be mind blown because the stories that you thought were true are going to be not so true. Uh, Percy Jackson is slightly more accurate, but if you are familiar, and I forgot to turn it on, uh, so I know, I even wrote myself a note, and then they come in here and they just chatter at me, and I know I'm choking, uh, so I'll just turn on. Um, and so, let's back up. 
The, how many of you guys have seen the Hercules cartoon with uh, the little strong guy and the little fat dude with the little goat legs, stuff like that? All right. So if you're familiar with that movie, who's the bad guy in that movie? Hades. 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 The guy that has the big blue flamey hair thing and hates Hercules and tries to kill him and stuff like that. Pretty much everything in that movie is wrong. Starting off with the fact that Hercules and Hades were friends. They actually helped each other. Hades is Hercules' uncle, and they got along and talked quite a bit. Hercules does have someone who hates him, who tries to kill him multiple times. And that person is yeah. Hera. But Hera's his mom. Hera's not his mom. But Zeus is his dad. Zeus actually is his dad. But the problem is Zeus was friendly. Hera <laughs> found out about the friendliness. Hera didn't approve of the friendliness. Hera would like to kill her husband, but you can't because he's a god. But you can kill a baby. So Hera decides to go and kill a baby instead. And that's how the story of Hercules comes out. Disney apparently said, what? You can't have friendliness and baby killing. That's wrong. So they changed the whole story. And so, and oh, remember the titans in the, the movie Hercules, those big ugly monsters? Yeah, those aren't titans. Those are actually just monsters. Uh, we have titans in Greek mythology, but they're not ugly monsters. They're just titans. Uh, and so, like, everything that's going to happen in that movie is going to throw you off a wee bit. It just makes it fun. So every time that we get something, you're like, but that's not how it was in the movie. I'm just going to come over and slap you until your teeth fall out. Uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's a heads up. It's just being honest with you. Uh, so just make sure you try not to refer back to that because it's just going to hurt your teeth in the long run. Hades! Let's jump to that one next. Hades is gods, places, things, other stuff. Don't you shake your head at him, Dee, because you're actually right. It goes in two oh. places. You had a 50% chance. Hades is both a god and a place. It could go in either one. No, I'm Mr. Bobiak. I see a poster, and I can see him right... You're correct. Once again, Bud Jackson, we have Hades. <gasps> this fellow right over here. Oh, uh, you Hades. are so special. Hades uh, has the, the, the dark cloak that he's wearing. In the movies, TV shows, they make Hades out to be evil. In Greek mythology, Hades is not evil. Far from it. Hades is antisocial. Hades is a god. Hades doesn't like talking to people. Hades was the kid wearing dark clothing, painting the fingernails black, listening to My Chemical Romance, and playing bass guitar while trying not to talk to people. That's Hades. The problem is, people keep trying to talk to him, which makes him really grumpy, and he lashes out. But he was never actually mean or angry or anything like that. He also was not very creative. So when he got to name the place where he lived, and people kept asking him, like, what are you going to call the place? What are you going to call the place? He's like, Hades. And I'm like, that's your name. He's like, Hades. And I'm like, we're just going to call it Hades. He's like, Hades. I'm like, Hades it is. And so they called the place where he lives Hades. So his name was Hades, H. Hades, and he lived on Hades, on Hades Street in Hades, USA. And so it made it really easy to fill out the forms on the I step because it's just the same thing. Uh, but he was not a very creative soul. So it is both the place where he lives and his name. Underworld. Gods, places, yeah, that was easy. things, other stuff. Underworld is the same thing as Hades. They are synonyms. They are the exact same thing. If you're familiar with the, uh, the urban legend, uh, the, you spin around in front of the mirror and you say the, the name three times. Uh, oh, Bloody Mary. Mary. Bloody Mary. Uh, and so Bloody Mary is the idea. You spin around, you say it, and all of a sudden she pops out and you're like, and you, like, you freak out and you scream and wake up your parents. Well, the Greeks believed in the same thing, except instead of a creepy girl coming out of a mirror, it was a dead guy wearing a cloak. And so they believed that if you said Hades' name out loud, he would actually appear in front of you. But the problem was, if he appeared in front of you, he would also take you back to the place he lived, and thus meant you died. So people were always afraid to say his name out loud. So they always referred to him by a nickname, usually the dark one, or the cloaked one, or the golden one, or the rich one. Because he was the richest of all the gods. Why was he the richest of all the gods? Shove. Because he was the god of death and wealth. Close. Why was he the god of wealth? Because okay. of the burial? Getting stuff? close. Think about this. Wealth comes from gold. Wealth comes from jewels. Where do we find gold and jewels? In the ground. In the ground. Where does Hades live? In the ground. See how it works out? So it's thought that he had access to all the gold and the jewels. So that's why he was the god of wealth. Because you get the stuff in the ground, which is where he lived. And so you'd always refer to it as a nickname. Same thing with the place he lived. You would never say, like, let's say a kid was talking in class nonstop and then just suddenly fell over dead and like, oh no, Shoemaker's dead. Uh, you wouldn't say, oh no, she went to Hades. Uh, and for Hades, it was not for bad people. Hades was for good and bad people. Everyone went to Hades. It was just for dead people. Because if you were to say that out loud, it was thought that the god would appear and then take you back down with them. So you'd always say, oh no, 
Shoemake went to the underworld. I'm like, why do you call it that? Where is it located? Under the... Oh, I got you. And so it was called the underworld because it was under the... World. Not very creative. Maybe uh, issues. Yeah. Uh, titans. Gods. Places. Oh, wait. Wait. Things. Other stuff. They are... Titans are gods. They're the exact same thing. All the big posters you see are titans. They're also gods. It's like saying that you're human beings and people. They're both referring to the same thing. Titans were big creatures that were super huge and could stomp on you if they got angry. Because titans were super big creatures that could stomp on you, humans referred to them as gods. Because if you didn't, they'd stomp on you. So you refer to these big creatures as gods. So titans and gods are the same thing. So anytime that you see the movies and they refer to titans as other things, they're wrong. <coughs> Zeus was a titan. Hades was a titan. Every god you can think of was a titan. They're all titans. Uh, vulcanize. Gods. Places. Things. Other stuff. It is just a word from Greek mythology. Actually, it's from Roman mythology. Um, and so it's going to come from Hephaestus, whose Roman name was Vulcan, who was the god of fire. And Vulcanize means to melt stuff to make it stronger. So it's just a word from Greek mythology. Pandora. God. Place. Thing. Other stuff. Technically, we're going to say Pandora's a god. Because even though she was created by the gods, she was brought to life and lived forever. And she was created as a punishment for humans. Uh, but that's a long story we'll get to. Pandora, by definition, is made up of two Greek words. Pan, meaning all or everything. And Dora, meaning small Hispanic girl that plays monkeys. And so when you, <laughs> Dora, meaning gifts. And so Pandora in Greek means many gifts from one place. If you use the app on your phone called Pandora, where you have all these different music channels that come from one location, they oh. called it that because Pandora means many gifts from one. If you saw the movie uh, with the big blue tall beings and the tails, um, uh, Avatar, the planet, Avatar the planet they go to is called Pandora. Because when you go there, it has all of these resources that are supposed to fix the, you know, fix the world. And so it's called Pandora because all these gifts come from one place. In the story of Pandora's box, we'll get to that. It's the idea of all of these gifts coming from one place. And there we'll stop. Tomorrow, we'll get to more of these fun and finish it out and get some of our first stories. Good luck, those of you joining the...